Good morning, afternoon, or evening. How y'all doing today? Welcome back to Mr. Morrill's Honors Geometry class. Today we're talking about uh, an introduction to trigonometry. And trigonometry is really cool, really fun. I really enjoy trigonometry. It has a lot of uses in real life. If you guys have ever used uh, GPS coordinates, they're using trigonometry. If you've ever seen uh, those shows uh, like... like uh, Coast Guard rescue and stuff like that where they triangulate the location of a missing ship or a missing human in the ocean. They're using trigonometry. If you've ever wondered, how is it that they figured out the width from one edge of a huge river to the other to make that bridge? That's trigonometry. Um, distances across lakes, trigonometry. Um, bridges. Heights of mountains, heights of buildings, trigonometry. Trigonometry is really, really, really useful. So we're going to give you just the basics today, okay? You're going to have a whole bunch more next year. But if I give you these basics and you really understand these basics, you're going to do extremely, extremely well. So first of all, when we're talking about trigonometry, okay, we're, we're really going to focus on what's called right triangle trigonometry. And we already know that a right triangle consists of, of course, two legs and a hypotenuse, okay? So we know that. That's awesome. We're going to go ahead and tweak this a little bit, though. When we're talking about the sides of a right triangle in respect to, tri to trigonometry, we're going to be talking about sides in respect to an angle. In this case, we're talking about angle A or theta. This symbol is called theta. It's a Greek letter. It's a very popular and very commonly used in trigonometry, and it just represents an angle. From this angle A, or from this angle theta, from this particular angle, the side across the angle in question is going to be called the opposite. The side next to the angle in question is called the adjacent. And, of course, the hypotenuse is always constant, and it is across the 90-degree angle. If you know this, the next part is going to be really simple. If you don't want to remember this, your life is going to be miserable when it comes to trigonometry. So I would suggest you memorize this. Why? Because when we're talking about trigonometric functions... We're using this little triangle setup that I just gave you. The opposite is not always going to be that side. It will depend on the angle in reference. But we definitely know that the side opposite an angle is the opposite. The side next to an angle in question is the adjacent. And the side opposite the 90 is called the hypotenuse. Now, there are three basic trigonometric functions that we are going to learn here. There's really six in total, but we're not going to complicate things. We're going to take baby steps, and I want to make sure you know the basics. So that next year, when they introduce this again, you can say, oh, wait a second. We already learned the basics here. That's going to be that much easier. It's called the sine, cosine, and tangent. There's a nice little acronym, I think it's called, when you know the letters mean something else. It's called Sokatoa. Sokatoa. Let's first concentrate on the first one. So. So S is sine. O is for opposite. H is for hypotenuse. So sine equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So when I want to find the sine of a particular angle theta, it is opposite over hypotenuse. So. Ka, ka, C for cosine, A for adjacent, H for opposite. The cosine of a particular angle theta is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So, ka, 
So, opposite over hypotenuse for sine, ka adjacent over hypotenuse for cosine. Toa, toa, t for tangent, o for opposite, a for adjacent. Tangent of a particular angle theta is opposite over adjacent. So we have sokatoa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine of a particular angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. The tangent of a particular angle is the opposite over adjacent. Sokatoa, sokatoa, sokatoa. Very easy to remember if you remember this acronym, in my opinion. Now, how does this work? How do we apply this? Well, let's find the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of angle theta. Whenever I'm doing this, I always try to make a habit of labeling my sides. So, since here's my angle theta, the side opposite that angle is the opposite. So, I'm going to label this opposite. The side next to the angle is called my adjacent. So, I'm going to label it adjacent. And the side opposite the, the 90 is called my hypotenuse. So, the sine of angle theta is opposite over hypotenuse, correct? But do we know the value of the hypotenuse in this particular case? No. So what are we going to do? We're going to remember, hopefully, it is a Pythagorean triple and x equals 5. If we don't remember that it's a Pythagorean triple, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find any side, any missing side of a right triangle. So sine is going to equal opposite over hypotenuse, so it equals four-fifths. The cosine of angle theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, so that equals three-fifths. And the tangent of this particular angle theta equals opposite over adjacent, which is four-thirds. That's sine, cosine, and tangent. Yes, sir. Okay, you could leave it as, as a fraction form, as I just did. If you want to get fancy and you want to make it 0 0.8, 0 0.6, and 1.33, you can. But I don't see the value in that. Okay? Now, what is the point of all of this? If I wanted to find the actual angle measure here, okay, on your calculators, there is a little button that has a sign to the negative 1. And that is the, what you use when you want to find the angle measure. The value of this particular angle is 4 fifths. But the angle measure, we don't know. But we can find it out. If I go on my particular calculator, second function, sign. I'm going to get this little symbol here that's going to open up a, a parenthesis. If I put the value, which I already calculated here, into my calculator, 4 divided by 5, close that parenthesis and hit enter, it's going to give me the angle measure, which in this case is 53.1 degrees. This is how people start building things. So now I know that in this particular triangle. This angle right here is 53.1. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going a little bit above and beyond what you have to do. Right now, for us, the real goal is just for you to be able to understand that the sine of angle theta was 4 fifths. The cosine of angle theta was 3 fifths. The tangent of angle theta was 4 thirds. But you know me, I like to kind of piece things together for you guys. So now, not only did you find the value, which was right here, but now I just taught you how to find the angle measure once you have a value. So I'm going above and beyond. Yes, sir. Okay, why do you do sine to the negative 1? Because that's called the inverse, okay? That's how you find the angle measure. Now, if I want to find the value, do it reverse. If I go ahead and plug in sine, just regular sine, and hold on, let me let me uh, 
get it more exact. So the inverse sine of uh, four fifths is really 53.1301. So if I take the sine, I just hit sine, and I put in that answer, 53.103, and hit enter, I'm going to get 0.8, which is the value. So they work backwards and forwards. If I take the sine of the angle measure, it gives me a value. If I take the inverse sine of the value, it gives me the angle measure. Yes, sir? Come again? Of course, if you go sine, cosine, or th because th it's all the same theta, right? Thank you, my brother. Yes, sir. Okay, now if I went 180 minus 53 minus 90, I would find angle A. But the sine, cosine, and, a and tangent, isn't it of the same angle, guys? So when you calculate it, they're all going to be 53.1. Yes, sir. Huh? Because sometimes, depending on what they give you, you don't know if you're going to be able to use sine, cosine, or tangent. Again, I'm going above and beyond here, guys. Okay? Thank you. Now, here, just find the sine. I don't want the angle, but what would the sine of theta here be? This is going to be opposite. Remember, this is my opposite. This is my adjacent. And this is my hypotenuse. So that's going to be 3 over radical 5, but I must rationalize. So this is going to be 3 radical 5 over 5. What's the cosine of theta? Guys? Adjacent over hypotenuse, but I have to rationalize. So it's going to be 10 radical 5 over 5, which is 2 radical 5. Very good, my brother. And what is the tangent of theta? Opposite over adjacent is 3 over 10. So now, again, if on, a, on the test I said, for extra credit, find the value of theta, you can use the inverse sine, the inverse cosine, or the inverse tangent, and plug in the value and find the actual angle measure for theta. For Just for giggles, let's do the inverse tangent. If I do the inverse tangent of 3 tenths, I'm going to find the angle theta. So inverse tangent of 0.3 equals angle theta would be 16.699. So in other words, it could be 16.7 degrees. Then from there, I can subtract 180 minus 16.7 minus 90, and then I would find this angle here. Do you see the beauty of this? Okay, now, if the cosine of angle A is two-fifths, find the value of the tangent of angle A. Well, doesn't the cosine relate to adjacent over hypotenuse? So my adjacent is two, my hypotenuse is five, but what's this? Pythagorean theorem. Five squared equals two squared plus x squared. 25 is 21 minus four, right? x squared, square root of 21. So now, what is the tangent of angle A. What is the value of the tangent of angle A? Opposite over adjacent, square root of 21 over 2. You keep doing adjacent over opposite. Be careful, my man. Does this make sense? Okay. Example 4. ABC is an isosceles triangle. Find the sine of angle C. Well, it would have been nice if I would have uh, labeled this. So let's go ahead and make this ABC. In order for me to do this properly, I'm going to have to drop down an altitude. Since so these two guys are equal, it's an isosceles triangle. I dropped down an, an altitude. The uh, Pythagorean triple, I mean, geez, the perpendicular bisector comes into play. 
So this is a 5, and this is a 5. This is a 5, 12, 13, because it's a Pythagorean triple. So what is the sine of angle C? Guys, this is my opposite. This is my hypotenuse. And this is my adjacent. So what is the sine of angle C? Opposite over adjacent, which is 12 over 13. Does that make sense? Uh, opposite of hypotenuse, sorry. Now, real quick, last, last but not least, you can go ahead and go to your class, but I'm going to show you real quick how to solve this. So make sure you watch this tonight. God bless you, and have a great day. Okay, so for this one, what you do is very simple. I have an angle 40 here. The X here is my opposite. This is my adjacent. So I got to ask myself, what trig function am I going to use that uses opposite and adjacent? It's going to be the tangent. So the tangent of 40 degrees equals opposite over adjacent, which is 50. Solve for x. So literally, I'm going to multiply 50 to both sides. So I have 50 times the tangent of 40 equals x. We know that if we plug in the tangent of 40, we're going to get a value. So the tangent of 40 degrees times 50 will equal 41.95. And in this case, it's feet. So the height of my tree is 41.95 feet. And that is the beauty of trig. Have a wonderful day. I hope you learned a lot. And take care. Bye-bye.